Hello everybody and welcome back to the Epic Flight Academy. My name is Mike Thompson and today we want to start our discussion on non-precision approaches. Now, as we get into the discussion of non-precision approaches, we want you to be successful, which is partly why we made these videos, so please click on that subscribe button. But remember, these videos all by themselves will not make you successful. These videos are one of three parts. So in addition to watching these videos, you should be enrolled in EPIC's online instrument course and studying the material that's linked there. And then thirdly, of course, review all of this content with your flight instructor. Now, non-precision approaches are the most widely available type of approach, and they come in many, many different varieties. What makes a non-precision approach is that they have lateral guidance only. In other words, there is no glide slope or vertical guidance. They give the aircraft and the pilot lateral guidance to the runway and are going to get you down to an altitude that you may not descend below until you see the runway. And that altitude is called the MDA, or Minimum Descent Altitude. And this is why non-precision approaches generally have higher minimums than precision approaches. Take a look at our graphic here. The aircraft is guided laterally down to a minimum descent altitude. Upon reaching the MDA, the pilot will level off and continue flying at or above that altitude until one of two things happens. Number one, the pilot sees that they have met the requirements of 91175, that was an earlier video, and can land the aircraft. Or number two, if those requirements are not met, the, air, the pilot will initiate the missed approach at the missed approach point on this non-precision approach procedure. So what is this diverse family of approaches consisting of? Well, let's take a look at this graphic. You can see there are quite a few different non-precision approaches. In green, we have highlighted three approaches that all work like localizers. That is the localizer, the LDA, and the SDF. And then in pink, you see here some GPS approaches that are used as non-precision approaches, LNAV and LP. And then in brown, you see some approaches that use in-route nav aids. Those are VOR and NDB non-precision approaches. And then finally in blue, notice that the ASR or approach surveillance radar is a non-precision radar approach. So today, we would like to take a look at the localizer and the LDA. So have a look at our graphic here from the online course. We are taking a look at the localizer approach to runway 19 at the Cape May County Airport. Now, without vertical guidance, a localizer uh, approach is more involved than an ILS approach. Why is that? Because it requires cross radials. And here you can see we've highlighted some examples. The cross radials off of that vortex are used to identify specific step-down points along the approach to that runway. Now, if you take a look at the minimums section from this approach, as shown here in our graphic from the online course, you can see there are two sets of minimums. Well, you might be wondering, why is that? 
the reason depends entirely upon the pilot ability and the aircraft's ability to tune in and identify all of those step-down fixes. So one of the key questions with non-precision approaches is when I get down to my minimum descent altitude, remember I have to be at or above my MDA, and I'm flying along and I'm looking for my runway, how long do I fly along? Do I just kind of keep going on indefinitely until I decide, well, I don't know, I guess I've flown long enough? No, there are specific missed approach points. Now, for our example of the localizer approach to runway 19, if you take a look at the profile view and we see the bird's eye of the field here from the bottom of the approach plate, where do you think that missed approach point might be? Notice the Maltese cross, and it has 1700 with the line under it. Well, that is the final approach fix for a non-precision approach, and it means I have to be at or above 1700 feet when I intersect and then cross that final approach fix. But where is the missed approach point? Ah, if you look in the lower right and you see that little timetable, there it is right there. It is not uncommon for a non-precision approach like this localizer approach to use a timer to time the missed approach point. So you see we've highlighted those times in red. It says from the final approach fix to the missed approach point, and it gives you a specific nautical mile range. Then it gives you a speed in knots, and immediately below that, the time. So the pilot would set a stopwatch at the final approach fix, fly down to the minimum descent altitude, and keep track of that time. So it says, if I were at 90 knots, if you take a look, at 3 minutes and 28 seconds later, I'd be at the missed approach point. So if I cannot identify uh, the uh, runway in accordance with 91175, and I can't land this airplane 3 minutes and 28 seconds later, I'm going to fly the missed approach. Now, notice that 90 knots. It does not tell me, uh, is that... Uh, Calibrated airspeed, is that indicated airspeed? Um, what kind of speed is that? Folks, that is ground speed. So don't make the mistake of looking at your indicated airspeed for this 90 knots. Work with your flight instructor on that. Now let's take a look at the LDA or localizer type directional aid. LDAs are simply localizer approaches that are not aligned with the runway. And we want you to take a look at this example from Honolulu. This is an LDA approach to runway 26 left. Now, if you look in the bird's eye view, you can see Honolulu Airport here, and you can see we're approaching that westerly runway 26 left. But you can also see that our approach course, I got to take a look, is what one, three, is 304. So we are flying toward Honolulu International Airport on a heading of 304 following this LDA, and at some point are going to make contact with 26 left, start a shallow left turn, and descend down to that runway. That's an LDA approach. Well, folks, that wraps up our introduction to non-precision approaches and the localizer and LDA approaches. Please join us next time.